When you create hierarchies in 3ds Max, you usually use the Select and Link tool. The tool is intuitive and easy to use when you link only four or five objects at a time. All that is required is a simple click and drag from a child object towards its would-be parent. However, this works well for a few objects at a time, but can be time-consuming when dealing with a large number of objects. Notice this bicycle chain that is made out of 30 individual parts. A single unit was modeled and then instanced 29 times. Suddenly, using the Select and Link tool doesn't seem like a great prospect anymore. What's more, the chain might have been made from 50 or even 100 units, which would have been even worse. Instead, you'll use a simple line of script to link the objects together. The script will automate the linking based on the selection order. This means that selecting the chain elements using a region selection is not a safe process. It does not guarantee the selected elements are in the order you want them to be. Using control for multiple selections is just as bad as individual links, as it will take as much time. This is where the Paint Selection tool really shines. You can use it to select objects sequentially, in this case right to left or left to right. Select all the chain elements by sweeping left to right. This makes a selection collection, or more accurately a selection array, as far as 3ds Max is concerned. Press F11 to open the Max Script Listener window. If you're not a Max Script programmer or have no intention of becoming one, don't fret. This particular script is very basic for everyone to understand. At the bottom of the white window, this is what you'll need to type in. For i equals 1 to 29, do dollar sign i plus 1 in brackets dot parent equals dollar sign brackets i. But what does it mean? Let's break it down for a second. The first part reads for i equals 1 to 29, do. This is basically defining a value you named i, it could have been any letter and i will take on values from 1 to 29. If you recall, the chain is made of 30 units, 29 of which will have parents. The top parent does not have a parent of its own and doesn't need to be included in the script. If the chain were made of 50 units, then i would have been equal to 49 and the line would have read for i equals 1 to 49 do. So, as i goes through all the duplicated chains, do something dollar i plus one dot parent equals dollar i. This part is defining the parent-child relationships of selected objects. The dollar sign refers to a selected object. The line is basically saying to make the second selected object a child of the first. When i equals one, the parent of dollar i plus one, one plus one equals two, making it the second selected object, is dollar i equals one the first selected object similarly when i equals two the parent of dollar i plus one equals two plus one makes three making it the third selected object is dollar i equals two the second selected object and so on you can fine tune the line of script to read for i equals one two dollar dot count minus one do dollar i plus one dot parent equals dollar i the dollar dot count minus one expression reads the count number in the array and subtracts one as the first selected object does not need a parent this saves you the trouble of always entering a numerical value based on a manual count of how many objects are selected so with the chain selected in the order specified by the paint selection tool, go ahead and type for i equals 1 to dollar dot count minus 1 do dollar i plus 1 dot parent equals dollar i in brackets and press enter. Done. 
Now you can test the links by moving or rotating the chains. What's more, if you select all the chains and rotate them about the top parent's pivot point, you get some nifty serpentine effects. It might not become a bicycle chain, but with other shapes it could be quite useful for web animations and motion graphics. This ends the tutorial as far as scripting and linking is concerned, but if you feel like it, here's how you can rig the chain with the Spline IK solution. Close the MaxScript listener dialog. In the top view, draw a line about the same length as a chain. Hold Shift after you click the first point to draw a horizontal line. In Segment Subobject Mode, divide the line about six times. This will create additional vertices that will help control the spline IK. In Vertex Subobject Mode, make all vertices smooth. Exit Subobject Mode when done. Select the first chain link, and from the animation menu choose IK Solvers Spline IK Solver. Click the last chain link, and then click the spline. The chain gets relocated. Select the spline again and go to the Modified panel. Change the helper size value, so you can see the point helpers better. Notice there's a helper wherever there's a vertex on that line, which is why you subdivided it earlier. From this point on, move around the helpers to get the chain to behave the way you want. Feel free to experiment by animating the helpers' positions.